What's up you guys? Marty Schwartz here, guitarjams.com. How do I work on my phrasing, my blues phrasing? And I don't know if there's one video you can necessarily make on that. So obviously I have a bunch more lessons at guitarjams.com. Uh, I'll leave a link down there for a jam track. But there's some things I think you should think about. Uh, whether you're a beginner or an advanced player, uh, these are things I personally try to work on that I've learned from guitar teachers and listening to my favorite players. So now I'm going to just talk about some of the some of the tips I was thinking about to work on your phrasing. One is repeating ideas or creating motifs. And what that does is the listener starts to become familiar with it and then you can tweak it. It also uh, sounds more lyrical more melodic when you repeat an idea. And it could be something super simple, like if I got this blues thing going here, and I'm just right in my open E pentatonic. You know? Two notes, repeating. Nothing fancy there at all, but a repeating idea, as opposed to just always trying to go up and down your scale really fast, or even trying to play fast at all. Um, maybe repeat it, and then maybe tweak it. Okay, if I go up into this position, and I tried to do it in the little intro there, you know, I worked on a little repeating idea in the, in the E major pentatonic. Uh, So right off the bat, I think uh, even if you're a super beginner, uh, try and create me melodies or repeating ideas. Uh, even limit the amount of notes. Like if you only know that pentatonic scale, maybe just take three notes of it. You know, limiting what you got and trying to create ideas off of it is always going to be better than just trying to play as fast as you can or going through a scale up and down. All right. Another thing, and this will be as you uh, move along as a player, and this is something that I have problems with and I need to work on this myself, and that's the open space. Leaving rests um, really creates an energy. Uh, it's dynamic, you know? You know what I mean? That open space. You gotta have the open space as an option. And uh, a couple of great guitar teachers I had said the same thing, and Tony Bruco has got a lesson on it as well, and I've talked about it, and that's singing the notes that you're playing. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean being like George Bench and... Yeah. You know, you don't, not literally like singing it into a microphone to match every note, although that is really cool as well. Um, one of my favorite bass players, Oteil Burbage, who's been in a ton of bands with like Allman Brothers, Derek Trucks. He's got a whole sing and solo thing at the same time, and it's really cool. You should check him out. Um, but singing the notes connects with that inner music inside of you. So that, right off the bat, is a really good thing. <laughs> Might actually make your singing a little better. 
didn't necessarily for me, but uh, but singing the notes also. Here's another thing that's really amazing about it. And for instance, like think about a trumpet player or harmonica or you know saxophone woodwinds. They have to inhale to create the sound, whereas a guitar player can just be like, with you know, without even thinking about it, eating a sandwich at the same time, whatever, right? But a wind player has got to go, and it, and it feels more lyrical, more like a singer. And so when you sing the notes even as a guitar player, you're forced to take breaths, which will kind of make the guitar be more similar to a singer singing, because you're having to take little uh, breaths that are going to stop the music from playing. So that's another thing to work on. <laughs> Okay, another thing, uh, dynamics. That's how loud and how soft you play. So another thing to think about, like if you're doing a blues solo, is try and create a beginning, a middle, and an end to your solo. Now, I don't always get to do that, and it is actually exciting to improvise that beginning, middle, and end uh, with your band and the other musicians you're playing with and listening to each other. So that's actually a really exciting thing about playing with another guitar player or even other musicians is they're helping create that bed for you to tell your little story over. Uh, so that'll play a part of it. Uh, a band like Fish and Trey Anastasio, that guitar player, I mean, they're amazing at improvising together and creating tension and, um, and intensity and building that jam up. And they're all doing it together. Um, but the dynamics, you know, in the beginning of your solo, it's nice to not you know, blow your whole wad there right in the beginning. Like start, start sparse, or you know, the next solo that you do, start you know with a real high bend note, and then let's say the next song you might want to start with a real fast thing low, you know, to, to mix up what you can do. But the amount of how hard and how soft you play, you can toy with that through a blues solo, and that's another thing. Another tip, you know, to think about is that intensity that you're playing with. And most guys are going to, you know, you kind of start soft. You know, and as it builds up and the band's building up, you know. You know, go into your, go into your uh, face melter as you build it up. And that'll always go over really well is, is to ramp your solo up and, and know when to get out. <laughs> That's another tip is don't solo uh, for too long. Really be conscious. And I was worse at this when I was younger in college, you know. Um, but be conscious of when you feel like it's a good time to get out because less is more. Think about this. When you uh, play all your licks, uh, you know, we all – you know, every guitar player only has so many like licks and tricks to do. So if you blow them all out, but then you just want to keep going with the same ideas and the same ideas, it's actually more boring than to leave that listener wanting a little more like, oh my God, I just wanted him to keep going forever. You know, you cut it back. You're going to get a chance to solo again, you know, if you're a guitar player, especially. So know when to get out of the solo, you know, I'd say less is always more when it comes to that. To obviously have a bunch more lessons at guitarjams.com. Uh, I'll leave a link down there for a jam track so you can immediately work on those ideas. And I'll see you in another lesson real soon. Thanks a lot. See you later.